Wiggity, wiggity, miggity, miggity, the Mac Daddy. Check, 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 check. I'm here. That's the, I've been referencing crisscross on all intros. Now I can't get my head out of it. <laughs> oh, great song, crisscross. Did you get into that? No, I didn't. Really? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll make you want to jump, jump, the Mac Daddy. I'll make you jump, jump. The Daddy Mac. Are you kidding? No, I don't know. We'll have to. We'll, did did we'll, you? We'll, 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 we'll cut this up and we'll throw a cut, throw to it. <laughs> Um, subject to licensing. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know the guys. I know the guys personally. <laughs> I'll just message them. Um, and and just a shout out. You didn't recognize that the intro was from Offspring Smash. No, I didn't. I didn't know. What, what year were you born? But so I'm at eighty six. Oh yeah, I'm at, I'm eighty four. I'm, I'm massive in Offspring. But maybe you came later. See, I I I'm eighty four, but I had two older brothers. Yeah. So at, in nineteen ninety four, when Smash was released. I would have been 10, yes, but my brothers true. would have been like 15, 16 kind of eyes. So they were like right into that fringe Kurt Cobain, like yeah. don't talk to me when my door shut, you know, what was me. I had all the posters <laughs> on the walls too. Oh, see, remember like, Rage Against the Machine? I remember we, yes. look, remember we literally cooked that tape by listening to Killing in the Name of, you know, when you had the um, cassette and you keep rewinding it and it would eventually get too thin yes. and then, and, just, and then kind of oh, we get hot. Oh, yeah. Remember? And then my mum's like, is that swearing? I'm like, nah, no way. Fuck off, mum. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the meatloaf, we want it now. <laughs> uh, remember you used to be able to get music at Sanity? Or yeah. Whatever, but you used to be able to get a, that was a cassette, ago. a CD, yeah. and then occasionally they would have, this is moving a little bit further along, but then they'd have like a release of a VHS. Or if they had a um, video, like, like a documentary or something. I don't know. I just yeah, that, yeah. Like, yeah, my my first my um, like, well, you mean we can't listen to it now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know where to play it. Uh, even someone gave us a CD, like uh, at our at Phoenix's school, they were like, oh, "I'll give you a CD for the photos." I'm like, I don't know where what to put it. Like, yeah, what do, I, what do I do with this? Uh, yeah. But I remember my first um, cassette tape was um, almost said Savage Garden, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was swear to God. Well, I promise. I promise. Even though I do fantastic. love Savage Darren Hayes is a is a god among men. You know what's funny when we're traveling through Croatia in 2010, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing Darren, like Savage Garden and Darren Hayes. Really? It was like, you're in anywhere, you're in some obscure island on a boat with no radio, Darren Hayes plays. That's long like, yeah, it's, yeah, he's, he's big in Europe. But I was talking about um, Soundgarden, Disarm. Oh, Soundgarden, so that was my first ever $5 um, cassette. cassette tape. Yeah, in, from, from Sanity. And how they had the front... Um, display with all everything vertically along the shelving uh anyway sanity we used to go to do you remember you used to walk in a sanity and you'd be able to put the headphones on and hit play on like the top 10 or 20 albums of the week what a time to be anyway, alive it was it was uh it was when the experience of going to the shopping center was at the local westfield was a truly we used experience. to go to miranda fair so westfield miranda mm. and we would just go there at four o'clock on a thursday and hang for late night shopping mm. till like 10 30 security's yeah. kicking you out yeah. And you're like, nah, man, I'm going to one more thing from Mac is actually, I always work at Subway. Oh, eat and, fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to, um, we used to have bargaining with the Maccas because Maccas was oh, across. So, so I, they'd give us food, we'd give them food. Um, they got a crush on one of the girls there and she probably had a crush on me. No, probably not. Me. Maybe. The Lord Mayor of the Southern Shire. Yeah. She was like, um, that guy's super hot. <laughs> no, I don't know what else. Anyway, what we're talking about today is uh, the Zoolander philosophy. Chances are you've seen Zoolander. Chances are you know who Ben Stiller is. And I was always referencing this. Like it's so funny when when it says it at towards the end of the movie. He's like, I've never missed a show. <laughs> he's like, when he's going, turn off my phone. Like I've never missed a show. I've never missed a show. And it got me thinking about Sparkies and switchboard upgrades. Yeah. And it's like, I've never missed a switchboard upgrade. And chances are, wherever you are right now, if you've got a board upgrade on, on Tuesday, guess where you're going to be on Tuesday? Uh, the switchboard upgrade. The board upgrade. Guess what? I love board upgrades. Like, if I was still back on the tools, I'd be, that's like the dream. The radio on or the tradio, as someone called it the other day. Tradio. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. It's, um, it's a different world now, though, because now, though, because a lot of people plug in their phone and play 
stuff off Spotify. Mainly, mainly most uh, job sites I walk onto, the electrician's got the Spiky Coach podcast cranking full ball. Um, yeah. <laughs> and enjoying that. No, but it's a world, like, because... Yeah. You, or or even to, AirPods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not a big fan of AirPods on site. I feel like it's a... I don't know. That's just me. I just feel like it's Unless a, you're listening to us. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, like, when you've got a team of guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. When you're by yourself, that's totally fine because it's probably more considerate rather than just having, like, you know... Um, Barnes, Savage Garden, <laughs> next train out of said um, dance. But, yeah, yeah. but it's different now, like with uh, digital radio and, and just music at your fingertips. Because um, I remember if we were working in Brisbane, um, you obviously have any so many radio stations that you could select. And if you went to the Goldie, you couldn't, they, like the radio frequency didn't work down there. So you had your Goldie station, then you went to the Sunshine Coast, you had that station. If you went western, out to sort of Toowoomba way you had that station as See, well. So. Sydney's so different for us because like we it's the one station I mean if you go to Wollongong different but like a lot of our work was Sydney <laughs> or eastern suburbs so you pretty much not changing stations yeah. um but yeah I was a big triple j guy uh, yeah. mainly and this is before it changed it's like no, it, everyone says that like no matter you know my older brother's like oh it used to be better and everything like used to be better and used to be different but like you know i just used to like the variety and elodie used to get played on it a lot as well so but I'd i think, listening I out. think with triple j is that when you hit about 35 you have to hand your card back in yeah, so you, it's you're, it's you're so funny because I, I, I remember being old. like 30 35 going like just not resonating with this music and then and then you look at like it's if you read anything it's like this is designed for 18 to 25 so it's like you're outside the demographic and when you get over 35 when you get over 35 you're just craving cold chisel on repeat you know triple m yeah yeah (laughs) you just you just i actually i still froth on triple j but like but i tell you what like it's just that any nrl grand final it's just like who are we going to get let's get cold chisel is it 2015 2005 2045 let's get cold chisel 2075 sons of cold chisel <laughs> can they think outside the box please nrl yeah. give us a break anyway the zoolander philosophy um you've never missed a show you never missed a switchboard and i want to just highlight if you take one thing from this podcast and one thing only cold chisel will play at the 2030 <laughs> <laughs> well we just always already assumed we're assuming our listeners are educated um but like but if you take one thing out and one thing only I want to challenge the mindset. How come you don't miss switchboard upgrades, but you miss office days? How come you can be so scheduled, so organized, so prioritized on the board upgrade? Never miss the board upgrade. I'm going to be there. Oh, sorry, we can't get that done today. We'll go over here. But the office day is just like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Cancelled. Yeah, cancelled. Because I think the foundational core belief has to be the money is made or lost at the switchboard upgrades. That's not true. <laughs> the money's made or lost in the office. The money's not made or lost with your hands. The money's made or lost with your head. The money's not made or lost with how good you are on a board upgrade. The money's made or lost with can you get your quotes back on time? Are your is your hourly rate correct? Have you checked your jobs? Is your price book foundationally correct? Have you met that person at 9:30 for a coffee? Have you organized tomorrow? Have you organized next week? Is that person expecting us? Do I have work in three months? Do I have work in six months? The money's made or lost between the ears. Yeah, it's that's a. I've just had a sort of brainwave right now. Uh, I know it'll shock most people, uh, but I was just sort of thinking it's similar to driving a car that if you've just got the car going 60 Ks an hour for, well, let's just say 100 Ks an hour for five hours, you know that you're going to travel 500 Ks. That's just a given. That's one physics. second. It's physics. One, it? two. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right yeah. Anyway, yeah. So where is It's science. I'm just going to say science. Uh, maybe the Big Bang. Anyway, we're getting deep here now. Uh, but if you're driving at 40, then 120, then 30, then 60, then 80, there's no way known to have any real defined or determined idea of when you're going to reach your destination. So if that's, if you think about the office time uh, being booked, scheduled, that we do it on this day, it creates the consistency and the continuity to your business, almost like a hum of an engine. I like, I'm liking this, almost like a hum of an I'm, engine. I'm getting, so it's going I'm getting same, excited. It's going the same consistency because what happens with consistency is that you can expect, I guess, generalized or assumed outcomes uh, yeah. with that with that consistency. A hundred percent. And you just look at it, um, 
And I'm a big believer you've got to find yourself on the right side of effort. You've got to find yourself on the right side of the office um, staff because on the wrong side, like eight hours this week, 16 hours this week, 24 hours this week, that turns into 16 hours, 32, 64 hours. So it's like you can actually never catch up. If you miss this week, guess what's coming at you next week? Double admin. If you miss that week, guess what's coming at you? Probably, and it's it's a compound effect. It probably quadruples because it's like, I, I mean, <laughs> this is so funny to talk about. I remember being so far behind on invoices sometimes. I'm like, I've got a neck like two beers just to even consider looking at where I was six weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> like just, just, just to relax. Yeah. I'm no, like, this chill. is stressing yeah. me out. And um, you, but you tend to overanalyze then too when you've got yeah. so much on. You're like, I actually don't know where to start. And then and having a couple of stubby theory relaxes you down. You just like send, 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 send. Well, wow, yeah, I said that one missed a grand. Whoops, sent that one missed three grand. Oh, yeah, I can't oh, build I sent that one and yeah. I charged an extra five and they paid. But that's what happens. Like you create this like complete madness. Yeah. Of, like just think about like learning to drive in a manual. You're just going down the road, just like jerking like backwards and forwards. It's Yeah, it's full on. And like because what happens if your invoicing's late, you end up being like better not charge for that. This is a bit more than I thought. And not only that, your invoice is getting sent. I don't know, for me, it was like late at night sometimes. And Everyone hey, loves getting an 11 p.m., $15,000 What's better than waking up to <laughs> an invoice going, like, what's this? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is this? A detailed variation list. Yeah, I wrote as, it out in detail. I wrote it out in detail. <laughs> line one, as discussed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> line two, money, COB. <laughs> line three, yeah. debt collectors coming at you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just so crazy because like, the money's made or lost in the office. You've got to find yourself on that right side of effort. And and if the if the office stuff is behind, your quoting's behind. When your quoting's behind, like we talked about this the other day, mm. there's three reasons why you don't win a quote: non-ideal price, non-ideal client, and non-ideal timing. In other words, the quote was meant to be sent two weeks ago and it was sent today. And they're like, well. Job's done. The, the job was done last week. Or or even still, like, it's just not filling them with confidence or you had to strike while the iron's hot and you missed your opportunity. And which I, on that, if you are going to send a late quote, bring the client first and see if they still need it. Because otherwise you're compounding the disappointment because you've now wasted time sending a quote that was never, ever going to be accepted because the job's already been done and just on that cam's not saying bring the client at 11 p.m he's saying no, no. call the client at four o'clock yeah. be like i'm so sorry this hasn't been done communication goes a long way having the awareness to communicate will change your business so i always encourage everyone when you're looking at your invoices if you feel you've got that gut feel that something's not right make the phone call if you just want to double check the variations were communicated effectively make the phone call write it out on the invoice too or write it out on the progress payment or write it out in the body of the email sometimes the additional two to five minute stuff just goes an absolute long way right absolutely so so it's like the money's made a loss in the office big believer here when you buy yourself on the tools and you got an apprentice uh you've got their tafe day mm. right when you don't have their tafe day in the holidays You've got a liability. <laughs> You've got like yeah, a so so you definitely so you, got to have a look whether they're block or day release. Yeah, so block release um, is super interesting. Like because I never dabbled. Have you dabbled a block release? Mm. Yeah. So we've, I've only ever dealt with a school term yeah. situation. How does how do you find block release? So obviously it's better because you never. You see, for me, five apprentices was like four. Because one of them was a TAFE That's, all the time, yeah. So, depends. so it's actually quite easy to manage. And you, and as a business owner by yourself, you've got that day to. It depends totally on your size of the business. Yeah, like and and side. like demo, where where you are, because most of the rural lords have no choice but to block release That's because cool, yeah. you know you're you're up in the Northern Territory and you don't even have a computer. Harsh. <laughs> no, no, they got a computer. Love you, Northern Territory. Live there for two years. Respect. Shout out to Marty Southers somewhere up there. Great Actually, time. I think he's in. Is he in Queensland or Northern? I don't know. I don't know the area enough. Oh, Southers, oh, I don't know. No. Uh, no, he's no, he's he's an hour and a half west of Cairns. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's Northern that's Territory. Not, that's not Northern that's Territory. Not Northern Sorry, Marty. We love you. Yeah. My. Uh... Greg's never left New South Wales. Um... <laughs> yeah, did <he> once. <laughs> Going straight back. <laughs> yeah. I actually, sent him back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. So um, create that consistency. Uh, well, not create that consistency. I identified the importance of the office day because it creates the consistency and consistency is the key to your business because what happens is everything uh, flows the way it should be so you're not the yo-yo that you, that you sort of end up feeling and like Crowley said before is that 
if you miss this week, it doesn't just get transferred to next week. It doubles the week after. You miss the next week, it then triples. It, it doesn't. It, it's like the old theory, I'll, I'll just catch up next week. You never catch up. All you're doing is just kicking can, the can down the road, so address it. Um, sometimes too, like from my point of view, if you do find yourself in that situation, you need to can jobs and dedicate the time to catch up because 100%. catching up next week doesn't work. It's like, no, no, I need to allow two days this week to catch up and the relief is phenomenal. Well, most of the time what happens when people catch up on their invoicing or catch up on their quoting or catch up on your office admin staff is I'll go, I booked in Friday for it, but they haven't realized that there's 36 hours to fit into an eight hour window. And then when you're trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, what happens? You shut down emotionally. So the eight hours you're meant to get in is probably four hours of productiveness because you're scouring through trying to work out, I'm never going to get this done. And, and if you can't start, it's a real thing. Overwhelm is a real thing. So try and, before you start your office day, try and work out what you can achieve today. What's the, what's the priority? And here's the thing. I'm a big believer in this. At the first stage of business, you, you're going to have to sacrifice at least one night. So we have, we have group, group coaching on a Tuesday night. I'm a big believer that make Tuesday or Monday or I Sunday start, or something. It's not forever. It's no. not like you're sacrificing a night until kingdom come. You've got to put in the effort and energy and time. And I think it's important that you don't open the computer every night. I think it's important that you have some kind of structure and your family or partner or kids or mom or dad or brother is providing you meatloaf <laughs> in the office for that. Uh, if you're working from your dining table, it probably it can it can be sufficient for a certain time, but not too long. Depends on what um, I think. It's depending on what you're doing, like and time of day, time of night. Like if yeah. it's just to maybe jump on and just shoot through the emails or create the task list for tomorrow, it can work. But yeah, you shouldn't be there if the kids are running around. Um, try and avoid that, but also identify that too. It's also not forever. Like it's not, not forever. So, it forever. Yeah. so sometimes there's got to be a little bit of short term gain and communication. Like just tell your partner that hey, look, we, we need to do this because of A, B, C. Get them involved. They understand what's going on because otherwise resentment builds up. It's like hey, um, so we've got future, babe. So we've got, <laughs> no, it's just like hey, um, behind on this, this, and this because of A, B, C. Um, it's you know I need to get it done uh, because if we don't get it done. Um, X, Y, Z occurs and they're like, sweet, no worries, and we're on the same page. And then, but then they might identify how you need to hire an admin person also too, because sometimes stepping backwards and having a bit of an open wide look at it also identifies. Yeah. Things. So find yourself on the right side of effort. I'm a big believer you need a day when you're sort of traveling just yourself an apprentice. You add a trade apprentice team, you need another day, you add another trade apprentice team, another day. So at five trade apprentice teams, you're off the tools. And if you can find yourself on the right side of that, so many business owners mask the problem by working too much and administration at night. And sometimes we look at people's cost operations and I'm like, that's too low. You're, you're working too much. You're doing full-time office to full-time site You're full-time site training, full-time admin, full-time project yeah, and, and Yeah, and you're able to perform things cheap because you're working two full-time jobs. I sat with someone and they were making really good money and they're like, I'm making this much money. I'm like, yeah, but you're also working 80 hours a week. Like, like you know, lots of people can make money when they work twice well, as much. You saw someone you knew and they're like, I haven't seen someone work for a year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, just, I, I like my head torch and my pliers and that's it. So if, wherever you're at, find yourself on the right side of the office work. Know that the money is made or lost in the office. No substitute, no comparison. The business is going to grow when your office stuff flows. I stole that from you, but Ooh. I had to grow. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I like growing that. and flowing, baby. It's nice. Uh, directly proportional is the way I think of it. Um, if we're going to go back to my science days in biology, shout out to Mrs. O'Connor. Um, she tried to push me through and I just was an obnoxious 17-year-old. However, um, directly proportional in the sense that the effort that you're going to put into the office is going to directly flow out into the work that comes in, being on time, um, all the administration things. So if you're putting in two hours a week when you need to be putting in four hours a week, if you're going to get the directly proportional outcome to that. Likewise, if you're trying to uh, grow a bit more and, and, and develop and find more work, if you're putting in, uh, if you need four hours to get everything done, if you're putting in six hours, the effect will be directly proportional. 100%. So get it happening, get it scheduled, get it organized and treat it like a switchboard upgrade and never miss a show. See you guys soon.